Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and I'm here to tell you to stop using Dynamic Link. All right, let me qualify that opening statement. Stop using Dynamic Link if it's not working for you. And the fact that I have over 169,000 views on a tutorial I created called Fixing Dynamic Link, that tells me a lot of people are having problems with Dynamic Link. And whether you're having problems or not, or whether you're using Dynamic Link or not, everybody's trying to do the same thing. You're trying to get an After Effects animation in a Premiere Pro timeline. And here's the thing, you don't have to use Dynamic Link. And what I think is happening on a lot of new users is they think the only way they can get it to work is to use Dynamic Link. And you don't have to. We can do it the old way by just making a movie. I want to play this back. I want to show you two different versions at the end of this piece. And you try to tell me which one is Dynamic Link and which one isn't. All right, so at the end, I threw in a little title that I created in After Effects. And if we look here, I'm even going to turn on Comparison View so that you can see this. So can you tell any difference between these two? Absolutely not. They're identical. Let's, I'm going to show you what the title is so you have a better understanding. I'll turn off V1, and this is where the title is. One of these is a video, and one of these is an After Effects Dynamic Link project. And what you're looking at is transparency. So this cutout area is, I, I wanted that to fit around her. Now, you can see that the, the quality isn't that great. That's because the roto brush, it's not the best for rotoscoping, but I wanted to use something in After Effects that I didn't have in Premiere Pro, and that was the roto brush and cut this out in some other effects. So this one is the After Effects Dynamic Link comp, and you can tell that by its color. It's a pink color, and this is a video. So if I double click on it and it opens up here in the source monitor and I turn on transparency grid, you can see that it's just a transparent video. And you can see even this is transparent. Okay, now I wanna show you that this After Effects comp is over here in the Premiere Pro project panel. This video here is over here. So it's a full transparent video. Turn off my transparency grid. That's what that is. It's a video instead of a comp. That means it will always play back rock solid and not have any problems. The real reason that Adobe created Dynamic Link is for um, motion graphics titles that have a lot of iterations and changes over and over again while something is being approved. If you're not doing those changes over and over again, then the whole dyna dynamic link process is just causing you a headache. There's no benefit to it. But even if you did need a change, for instance, if that, that banner at the back, you wanted it from blue to red, then you just open up the After Effects comp, change it to red and export out another transparent video and relink this. You, you do have to remember that when you're relinking that you relink to the exact same format. So if you have audio channels coming out of After Effects, you better have the same audio channels or relink doesn't work um, that well. Um, it will actually give you an error. Everything has to, to match. So let's just show you the different way to do this. Instead of um, 
Well, let's get let's get something a little bit more interesting. Okay. So typically you'll right click and replace this with an After Effects composition. And this will launch After Effects and ask us to save this project. It also replaces that video in the timeline. What I really should have done, if I ever need to do this, I will actually copy V1 onto V2 and then turn that off, disable it. Uh, that way I always have something to go back to right away. All right. So if we go back over to Premiere Pro, you can see this is pink now. Well, I'm glad this is happening. Here's a perfect example of when Dynamic Link is uh, causing problems. For whatever reason, there's a lot of activity happening between Premiere Pro and, uh, and uh, After Effects, and I can't seem to click anywhere. So, and this happened, this didn't happen at all when I was creating this whole tutorial last week. This is one of the problems of having dynamic link. I have no idea why um, it's doing this. But there's the, the dynamic link project. And there it is over here. So when I double click on it, that's the After Effects comp that's linked inside here. So there are three applications running right now. There's Premiere Pro and After Effects, and then there's this middle program called uh, Dynamic Link, which is basically another version of After Effects running in the background. And that's what I think is causing the problem here, is, is that it's just, it's skipping and, and uh, jumping like crazy. So what I could do is close Premiere Pro, Go back to After Effects. Okay. So now I'm able to click on this. So this problem was caused between the communication between After Effects and Premiere Pro. I don't need Premiere Pro to be running right now. So I'm just gonna close it stop this that's going on and just uh, create an effect. So let's, uh, let's use some Kaleida. Okay, and change that angle. We. All right, let's do that. So I'm going to animate that effect. The rotation value. So there's my keyframe. Let's rotate that around. I'll duplicate that layer. Turn that off. Hit transparency, 100%, zero. All right, so there's our effect, something we can't do easily inside Premiere Pro. Dynamic Link is still connected to that Premiere Pro project that I work, but I guarantee you, if I launch Premiere Pro right now, that brr, brr, brr is gonna start happening. So I don't care about that. I wanna stop having problems. So render it. Composition, add to Media Encoder Q. I like to use Media Encoder. It's way easier to understand than the, the uh, actual uh, render queue inside After Effects, which is, um, Actually, Adobe's removing more and more features out of the render queue and, and sticking them in, in the media encoder. You already know media encoder. You can pick any um, format you want, including high quality formats. So if you're worried about, I'm going to lose quality, 
use what the professionals use. Export this out as QuickTime 4444. Huge files, they look gorgeous. You're not gonna have problems with that. So for me, I'm going to uh, use, because I don't have transparency, I'm just going to go for 10-bit Cineform QuickTime. Um, the one I used in the timeline that you already saw is this one, which is 12-bit with alpha, but I, I don't need the alpha on this one. So let me just place this in here, stick it in renders, and I'll call this Kaleida. I probably spelt it wrong. I'm rendering that out. There it goes. Wow, that was fast. Done, I get my check mark, okay. Close that, close big old nasty. Launch Premiere Pro. And like I said, I normally would have copied this one up to this here, but you can see that After Effects Dynamic Link is starting to work in the background. And you can see this is, it's working okay for me right now, along with the, the other one, like I said. But if it's not working and you're sitting here fighting to get Dynamic Link working, for no reason at all. All you want to do is just get your animation in the timeline. So let's bring that in. Let's go to our media browser. There's our renders. There's our Collider movie. Import that in. And because it's the same duration, there it is. Now I can delete these two, delete them, delete this, delete this. I have no After Effects in here. It all plays back. In real time, it looks fantastic, and I'm not worried about issues at all. So my animations are in the timeline, and I have no worries, and Dynamic Link is not stopping me from finishing my project. That's the most important thing. There's no reason for you to fight with Dynamic Link. Just get your job out and get it done. And I've answered people over and over and over again in the comments on that other tutorial where I say, just render out a video. And maybe you don't know that you can do that. Well, here you can do that. In fact, you don't even have to send from Premiere Pro. You can just open After Effects, import a video clip, make an effect on it, spit it out. And then, you know, this sending back and forth is just, an, it was meant as, a, as a, an easy way to make the two programs work together. But as you saw, even on a super powerful computer like I've got here, um, on my Dell 7740, this thing is a monster. But even with that, there was that weird thing happening between Dynamic Link. So I didn't expect to have any problems. When I created this whole tutorial last week, I had zero problems. I have no idea why um, I did, but you know what? I'm glad I did because I showed you how even I could fix those problems by deleting everything to do with the After Effects stuff in Premiere Pro. Do I still have my After Effects comps? Yes. Can I go back and change the color of that, that border on the banner, the kaleidoscope effect? Yes. You just spit out a new video, stick it in here, and uh, don't worry about it. So there's the only benefit you get from Dynamic Link is if you're doing I, I would say lightweight stuff, a little quick little title here that you're changing things like speeds and, and, and blurs and colors and fonts and things like that. It should work okay, but when you have big files going back and forth and you're on an underpowered little uh, ultrabook with not enough RAM, uh, or you're using, this is another one that I found people uh, 
run into you is they're, they're using pirated versions of, of Adobe Arr. applications and they're wondering why it doesn't work. Well, if you're not using the latest versions of everything um, from Adobe, then you're probably going to run into problems. Whew. Okay, so there you go. A little journey, a little hiccup, uh, but we got through it here. I showed you how um, you can now just forget having to use Dynamic Link if it's causing you problems. If it isn't, then keep using it. But for some of us, me included, <laughs> sometimes you just have to render out a video. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. We're getting close to that magic number. And if you want to support us some more, you can do that through videoreveal.com on our website. You can go to the shop there, donate once, monthly, um, whatever amount you want. There's a bunch of stuff you can download, a bunch of free stuff, and some things you can buy. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to uh, help reduce the strain of uh, your creative uh, technology.